everybody. Um, my name is Mujan. I'm very happy and delighted to be here. This is my second time in Tallinn. I want to know those people who are interested in science fiction, come and get closer a little bit, sit in the first row, second row. Anybody interested in science fiction? Nobody? Anybody interested in robots? What are you doing here in Robot 6? Huh? <laughs> Yeah, come closer, come closer. It's going to be a really cool, intimate conversation, not going to be only me. Um, so, uh, a little bit about myself and the reason I'm going to give you this talk. Uh, so, I'm a tech entrepreneur based in Paris, originally from Iran, Tehran. Um, today, I'm working at a company which is an IoT company, French company called Sigfox. I take care of a program called Hacking House, helping you know, young um, students, developers, to hack on um, big problems uh, in a really short time. And I'm also representing Women in AI, uh, basically, which is a community, global network of women um, professionals and experts in the field of um, artificial intelligence. We're today in over 60 countries with, um, I think, today around 900 members around the world. Um, and the reason I actually look like that here is because my talk is supposed to make you excited about the next um, big thing that is coming up and to think about you can get some, you know, um, uh, superhero powers. All right? So, a uh, human being like us, uh, we have been thinking about robots a lot. And the reason that we are having that in all our movies since, you know, since a very, very long time, is because we, we are thinking that intelligence can be also in the body, it's not only about mind, and uh, we, are, we tend to uh, create androids, um, things that they resemble us, to, you know, to feel more, um, more comfortable and more human. Um, so I want to ask how many of you more, know more than five movies in these pictures? More than five. Wow, that's not bad, actually. So you like science fiction, come on. So uh, I just want to mention one of them. For example, the first, um, the first movie made by, by us, uh, by, by us, like, yeah, animals don't make movies, by humans, um, is actually in 1919, and Charlie Chaplin was playing in that. And that was the first time that we had a robot uh, made of paper, paper, of course, that time, was built. And then, you know, uh, we moved forward with other um, different uh, varieties of robots. So, why I'm talking about robots? Because I'm, I'm interested in um, IoT hardware, but also um, I would like to just take these robotics as an example of how AI is um, taking, you know, dominating our industries every day. Uh, if you take this uh, study, this prediction as, a, uh, as an example, by 2050, we will have more than 10 um, billion robots who are only for personal services. They are not even included um, the industry robots. So this is a huge thing. This is, this is going to be huge. The market is uh, booming. And um, this graph also shows that the more and more uh, we have robots in all industries surpassing human capabilities. And of course, we've heard a lot that, so what happens to you know, um, us humans, you know, all the robots are going to take our jobs, and uh, some claim that if you have you know, certain skills, which are mostly um, soft skills and creativity, you can still keep those certain jobs. Um, so like different examples of robots, um, you know, the, the, uh, basically the robots that they can um, make cook for, like do cooking for you, robots they are used in a, you know, in a war um, uh, situations. The, there's also interesting robot, the, um, the spider um, kind of one that, it says that it's the, um, the, the first robot having a self-consciousness um, that it basically thinks that it exists itself. So that's actually an interesting case. Um, and we more and more, we're creating robots that they have a human face. They have a friendly, nice, beautiful face. And they get more and more uh, new skills, like that picture I put in on the Button. It's actually Sophia learning to do catwalk, which actually freaked out a lot of people on the stage. Um, but sometimes we tend to forget that behind that actually beautiful face, there's still a machine. And I was in Korea um, two days ago, and I thought that this example, this is actually interesting. 
in an Asian market, you see how trends are going sometimes crazy. So this Chinese man made a robot, and he actually married with it. And that's apparently the, only, the first official marriage of a, of a human with a, with a robot. Um, the question is, what are we doing to ourselves, kind of? We're creating robots, we are pretending that they are humans, and we even get married with them. So this thin line between humans and machines, this, this line, basically, this difference between humans and machines are getting thinner and thinner. Um, maybe some of you know um, this picture, this, this person. Um, Hiroshi uh, Ishiguro, he's a professor, he's a Japanese professor. Uh, actually, uh, his, his job is a, like, like an art. Basically, he's expert in creating androids, robots, who, um, they, that they resemble a lot to uh, humans. And he has made various versions of twins of himself. But also, these robots, they might, you know, um, turn against us. Um, so for this example, um, basically, it's, I don't know how many of you know it, but it's made, uh, it's a robot called Russian Fedor, um, made, of course, by Russians. And uh, they claim that this robot is actually a very powerful one. And they claim that they, this robot is supposed to be sent to Mars. So the question is, why a robot in Mars needs two guns? I don't know that. I wanted to ask uh, President Putin. Um, so, the question is that we are getting, day by day, less powerful than robots. Robots are taking, you know, the machines that we are creating ourselves to help us are actually taking uh, jobs from us. And we are, we, we can, you can imagine that we reach to a point that we are not good at anything that, you know, than another robot. Imagine trading, you know, fintech. Imagine um, cooking, driving. Um, operation, surgeries. Like tomorrow, for example, if there's a robot doing you know, some heart operation, if I want to get operated, I would not um, trust in a human. I would definitely you know, go with a robot man. So the more we go, the more we have like, um, a situation that we are left by um, basically no job that we can do it better. So what it remains for us, that's the question. And um, we reach a point that these robots and the machines that we have created, so they are intelligent. You know, there are three different levels of intelligence. First is artificial intelligence, narrow art artificial intelligence, then is general artificial intelligence, and then is super, uh, super intelligence. The, the time that you know, um, a machine that you have created is going to surpass uh, the human's intelligence. So that time, that's the, when they call, uh, talk about singularity. And uh, many of the basically um, big brains of you know today's AI and people who are talking about it uh, give us you know a lot of um, basically feedback that how we should you know uh, stay with ethics and how we should create the, uh, the frameworks from now to be able to avoid these catastrophic uh, things that are coming. So Elon Musk, actually I'm a big fan of him. Um, he's a little bit crazy, but. Basically, what he says is that humans must become cyborgs to stay relevant. So, I like this actually um, this argument um, because it can show. Actually, there's a trend. So, you, you know, you start with you know being a normal human, then you got kind of augmented with whatever we call it. Maybe today, um, a phone is actually an, um, you know an extension of you. Tomorrow it can be a cyborg that it can help you to hear better, to, to maybe see, see better. And we, have, um, we, ha we can have actually external gadgets that can augment something um, that we, we would like to focus on. For example, this company, Emotive, they're creating these helmets that you can have interesting applications with it. Basically, they check the uh, messages from your brain and then can transform it into interesting applications. This is a case that they have um, in a um, basically a university in the US. They have created these uh, drone races. So you sit, you actually don't move, don't do anything, but you concentrate to how to move your drone. So imagine you, uh, all of us can do that. Um, if you think of how you close your right hand, you 
without even doing it, you're triggering a part of your brain that, um, that can give you know, um, a message to, to the helmet. So if you um, program it that way, then you can run a drone. This guy, is, he's called Liviu, he's actually a friend of mine. He has created this piercing, his company is called NorthSense. So this piercing allows him to find the North Sense everywhere in the world he is. Basically, he's a self-GPS. Um, Nails, so Nails also, uh, he is born um, with a disease that he could not see colors. So his brilliant idea was connecting an antenna to his brain, it's coming here, so this, this is actually a camera. So this camera could hear colors for him. So a painting of Van Gogh for him was an Sonata of Mozart. And uh, yeah, Newton Howard, he's, a, he's, a, he's an awesome guy. He's basically uh, an ex-CIA agent. Um, 15 years ago, he turned into a neuroscientist. And then today, he's creating Kiwi, which is a chip that you can um, implant it in your brain that can turn you more intelligent. So the first idea will come from, uh, from the fact that some people are born with brain disorders, so there are, they have some problems, so this can help them. But what if we wanted to become more intelligent? So maybe we could use it too. Okay, so this is the, <laughs> the most crazy one. So Dr. Kevin Warwick. Um, if I'm not mistaken, he's Irish. He has basically transformed his whole body into a, like the most advanced cyborg in the world. Basically, his, his right hand is left, like something that is full of uh, screwdrivers and all the things that you, you need, for example, to do whatever you want to do with, with um, like creating a lot of stuff, like um, you can have cutters, whatever. And he has also um, put a, put a um, tracker on his wife's body that anybody touches her, he will understand it. So they have, he has done a lot of things. He has contributed a lot to the AI, um, AI and robotics uh, field. Um, sometimes these examples and these products can go out of the norm and can be a bit, a bit harmful. So in my researches, I came across this um, website called dangerousthings.com. They basically, and mostly they sell um, NFCs that you can you know, implant it on your, your skin and you can open doors. But also they sell um, very weird stuff like putting a knife under your nails. So literally becoming a Wolverine. Um, all these products, all these, you know, um, applications, algorithms behind, you know, the machines, all of them basically are the extensions um, of their creators. What does it mean? Basically, as a creator, as, let's say, you know, as an engineer, you have some certain values. As a CEO of a company, like, let's say, dangerous things that come, you have certain, you know, uh, objectives. So you come up with um, a product that is reflecting your um, values. So who is, who is basically saying what is ethical or not? It's a really big question today. We have a lot of uh, ethical frameworks, but um, we don't have a law or like a firm law for that. And this is the thing that we need to really um, make sure we are creating the basis today for the future. I would just want to go quickly on some examples. Um, basically, so on the left you see the, um, Nikon, Nikon's example that was not considering, actually these are examples of biased applications. They have created it now, but um, they were very um, controversial at the time that uh, it was basically figured out. So uh, Nikon basically could not understand when Chinese or Japanese, basically Asian people smile, they are not actually closing their eyes, they are just you know, smiling. And the reason was that they didn't have enough Asians in their engineering team. So they never tested it. Um, on the right, you see Google Photos are tagging uh, black people as gorillas. That was really actually a scandalous one. And uh, under, I have wrote, written the quote, at Google, seven out of 10 employees are men. Most employees are white, 60%, and Asians are 31%. And basically, uh, Latinos are only 33%. So that's actually why we don't, uh, they, they could not you know, know that in advance. They didn't have the opportunity to test it. Um, so at Women in AI, one of the studies that we, we, we did was that um, what happens to 
basically women over their you know, course of studies. We really focus on gender diversity. So th those are the biases that you saw that were in general, but really focus on gender bi diversity. And um, basically, we want to help them to stay in the, in the way to, you know, to reach an AI expert. Today, what is happening is actually the pyramid that you see. So at the beginning, we have a lot of girls, you know, brilliant girls, and they, the more they go forward, because of the lack of opportunities, because of the lack of um, good education at schools, they think that they should not become engineers and they, they don't study AI. And at the end, we have you know, one, two influencer role models that are not enough to represent the whole you know, opportunity for them. So here's one of the examples that it had been actually repeated a lot. So basically, as a stereotype, as a stereotype we think that mostly doctors are men and mostly um, nurses are women. This is on the internet. Internet is full of biased data. So what Google Translate is telling us is exactly the same. In Turkish language, if you just want to know what, it, what does that mean, um, in Turkish language, when you say he or she doesn't have any gender, you say just that person. But the translation in, in, in English is biased. Another example, personalized ads. So most of the jobs over 200K dollars are shown to men because the um, creators behind this algorithm thought that men are mostly interested in well-paid well and higher-paid um, basically jobs and not really women. So they don't show that actually to women. And the result is that they, they actually have a loss of opportunity. Uh, so in the past uh, World Economic Forum, the big leaders of, the, um, of our companies, of our societies, have been talking a lot about gender diversity. And one of them that is my favorite is Jack Ma. So he believes that women can be a, a perfect person, perfect leaders in companies to help um, to care about companies. And they are the best people we can recruit because they have the capacity of being more um, let's say, having a more EQ and emotional uh, skills. Um, An interesting thing is that, to the question that I asked, that what, what happens to humanity, I truly believe that all the work that we can have is going to be really related to EQ and emotional uh, intelligence. And not, not, it doesn't mean that men are weak in that. I think they have not you know, practiced it more. So they can actually you know, become better in that. And one, th one quote that I really like is uh, from Ray Bradbury, in science fiction we dream. I think that um, every time we have you know, a dream, we humans, we are creating novels, we are creating films to show that dream. And every time that happened, technology advanced and we, created, we came up with some, uh, some technological solution. And I think that science fiction is a great thing to make us um, go out of you know, our planet and explore the new world. And uh, so I took that also from SpaceX. Um, basically, I think that one of the things that we can do with all these um, products, you know, they're becoming maybe a cyber, expanding ourselves, it can help us to expand, um, it, can, it can help us to extend ourselves because human lives are very short. So how could we reach to you know, other planets? How could we go to other galaxies? It's because we could augment ourselves. And that's the thing I wanted to finish my talk with. Thank you so much.